Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. But there will be nothing that you're going to see that you've ever seen before, because we are going to have a show that is totally directed, produced, and written by God the Father. This is my friend Kevin Zadai, who died at, during a simple dental procedure and went to heaven. But when he came back, he had downloaded so much information. He's one of my three guests. Uh, then I have Dr. Keith Ellis. Keith has just been th gone through an encounter with God that I personally believe every word and knowledge he has Tens of hundreds, if not thousands, are going to be healed all over the world. And, and then I have my new friend, Jesse Duplantis. And Jesse, Je I'm just going to tell you this, he's funny in person, too. <laughs> I mean, I just, you can just laugh at the Cajun accent. <laughs> but all three travel with angels. And when all of our angels get together, there's going to be rejoicing in heaven. Now, you play, when you came back, you played nine instruments. How many did you play before you went to heaven? Uh, let's see. Zero. That's what I thought. <laughs> and what he does, he just orders these instruments, pulls them out of the box, and starts playing. And when he plays, I believe... It's the atmosphere of heaven. I believe you can get healed. Would you demonstrate that right now? Receive your healing, your miracle, your supernatural breakthrough. One on one with Jesse Duplantis and Sid Roth. Jesse Duplantis will reveal the secrets he has learned that has allowed him to walk in supernatural health, provision, success, and victory. Joining Sid Roth and Jesse Duplantis will be Kevin Zadai and Keith Ellis. And now, here's your host, Sid Roth. I would like to welcome you, our ISN viewers, as well as our broadcast partners, GB America, Inspiration TV, and ME TV, which covers Israel and the entire Middle East. I have been looking forward to this show, Jesse Duplantis, oh. for a long time. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> I am so, I, my expectancy, I, th I said this before we came up, my expectancy is always higher than what occurs. But you know what? I don't think I'm going to say that tonight. <laughs> I think we're going to have Hallelujah. God show up. Come I on. really believe that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesse. Thank you. Thank you. I am so intrigued by your background. I don't think many people know about it. That's right. And also, I'm intrigued by the humor. You tell me, before you became a believer in the Messiah, you weren't a funny man. No, I, I was not funny. In fact, when God saved me, the first time I ever preached, people were falling out the pews. And I was so mad. I went home and told Kathy, I said, what's wrong with these crazy people? And she said, you funny. 
<laughs> I said, this is serious business. What are you talking about being funny? I mean, I told a joke every once in a while like anybody mm -hmm. else. But when the Lord came into my life, I got so happy, Sid. I'm so full of joy, which is the fruit of the Spirit, and I'm so happy with an emotion of feeling, I'm just a dangerous individual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there, there was a book many years ago, I think it was by uh, Jerry Seville, if, if the devil can't steal your joy, he can't take your goods. That's correct. Yeah, the joy of the Lord is, is your strength. See, I mean, if you want to be stronger today, just start praising the Lord. I don't care if you're in a grocery store. I don't care if you're driving a car. Hey, can I, can I, I'm a real practical okay. person. Would you praise God the way you're in a grocery store if, if, if you feel like you're supposed to? Well, now, what would you say? What would you do? Okay, I mean, first, with, the Lord's with me all the time because you carry eternity around with you. Do you understand that? You carry eternity. But I'll give you an example. I'll give you one better than a grocery store. In my car by myself, all of a sudden, I went like, I just busted out in tongues. And I thought, what for? I'm the only one in there. And the Lord said, interpret it. I said, but I'm the only one in the car. He said, no, you're not. I'm in here too. <laughs> and, and I went, so I mean, hope I bust And I went, thus saith the Lord thy God. I thought, ain't nobody in this but me. But you know what? I needed it because it came out of God himself. So it's the same thing. It's a lot of time I might be walking in a grocery store and I see a person and the word of knowledge will begin to flow. Or somebody walking in and I said, you're physically sick. They go, how'd you know that? I said, the Lord just told me, and you're going to get healed right now. And they don't know what to do. They go, uh, uh, and you just pray for them real quick before they say no. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and I know that sounds crazy, but you got to understand, God's got to sneak up on the devil sometimes because mm. he's got people's minds warped to believe in that this sickness came from God. Let me make this announcement. The only person God ever made sick was Jesus Christ. On that cross, he had leprosy. High blood pressure, crippling arthritis, infectious disorder, cancer, diabetes. He took your infirmity. He bore your sickness, and by his stripes, you were not going to be healed. Were healed. That's true. Oh, oh, okay. He took our sins. He took it. But where? So where did where did the sickness come from? Perfect. I've had people say, I don't believe, listen, I am sick. I said, I'm not dealing with your am sick. I'm dealing with your word heal. If I can get you to look at your word heal like you're looking at your am sick, I'll get rid of your am sick with your word heal. I'm Jesse Duplantis and I approve this message. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, okay, hey, this is one on one. Okay. I want to know the one person in your whole family that intrigues me the most, I can't even tell you why is your mother. Yes. Tell, tell me how she became a believer, your whole family became believers, the brief story. The Real rabbinic quick. story. Can I tell you how you do the rabbinic? I should tell you first before <laughs> okay. I tell you to do it. The Talmud says, tell the story on one foot. <laughs> <laughs> I said, so it's quick. <laughs> it better be quick or you'll fall. <laughs> That's right. And it won't be the spirit. <laughs> we, we were we were raised Catholic. We went from a Catholic to a Baptist to a Pentecostal. Now that's confusion. Because you don't know what to believe. But my mom and dad got saved. We, I never heard of the word saved in my life. They didn't teach us that the Catholic Church. And when my mama got saved, she said, Jesse, would you like to get saved? I said, from what? <laughs> I, I never thought of that. You know, I thought of God as an institution, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. That's what I thought. I didn't think you could talk to God. I mean, you know, the priests talk to God. And I don't know, how many of y'all been Catholic at least once? Anybody? How many of y'all went to confession? Put your hand up. How many of you told the truth? Nobody? One. See, most people lie like a dog in a confession booth because they're trying to get out of there with three Hail Marys and three Our Fathers. That was me. You see, Mama got born again. And my mother came, and my mother controlled the whole family, very strong woman. And on a Christmas dinner, she stood up and told the whole family, I'm not letting any of you go to hell. Y'all going to heaven. And she, my mother, before she left this planet, she got everybody born again in my family. Mm. So she's been a great influence in my life. Tell, tell me about you. I, I can't even picture this long-haired yeah. rock and roll singer yeah. that, that has a bottle of scotch every day. Every day. Uh, that is, does everything a rock and roll singer oh, yeah. is notorious for doing. How in the world did you get saved? Well, I'll tell you, it's amazing. I drank a fifth of whiskey a day, smoked a little dope a week, snorted cocaine, PCP, crystal meth, took trips and never left my house. Oh, just gone, come back. You understand what I'm saying? Now I'm sitting there. But what happened was Kathy, she was watching Billy Graham. Kath, God made Kathy 
tell me something that got my attention. Now, I've worked on the same circuit as Led Zeppelin, Grand Funk, Kiss, Alice Cooper. I mean, let me tell you something, you young people, the girls screaming, and that was your mama or your grandma, one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> What's doing that? But anyway, I was about ready to do a rock show in Boston, Massachusetts. I'll never forget it, said. Quickly, uh, Kathy said, Jesse, uh, Billy Graham's coming on. And I thought, okay, what, what do I want to watch him for? And she said this, he pulls more people than you do. <laughs> that caught my attention. I said, you know, the guy does fill up stadiums. So I decided to watch him to get Kathy off my back. She, she also knew your hot button. How did he draw so many people? You wanted to know. I wanted to know that. So anyway, I was sitting in a hotel just like this. And you know how Billy Graham says at the end, if you'd like to get saved, write me and I'll send you the same literature that I send these and go to church next Sunday. I jump, I got off that bed. You gotta understand how I look, like long, dark chocolate brown hair, makeup. I had a good body in those days. You gotta believe it by faith, but I did. <laughs> you know, I had a six pack, I got a keg now, but I had a six pack, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I got up, I immediately left the bat, uh, the, uh, and went into the bathroom, but I couldn't close that door fast enough. God got in that bathroom with me. But why, why did you go in the bathroom? Because I, I was told never to cry. I was raised with a bunch of Sicilians. You do what you got to do. <laughs> My grandfather says, somebody mess with you. We don't fight in this family. That's what the Mississippi River's for. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. When you're raised on the streets and all, you do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened was I didn't, I didn't know how to pray. I, didn't know, I said this, if there's such a thing as a God, whatever Billy said, then you do that. I got born again. Something supernatural. Now, I didn't hear thunder and lightning, and I had to go do a rock show. Are you ready for this, Sid? I come out of that. My three-year-old daughter looked at me and said this. Jody, she said, Daddy, not going to hell no more. <laughs> and I said, Kathy, did you tell her I was going to hell? She said, no, she just saw it. I went down, did that show. Now, I walked in the night before. It was fun. When I walked in, it was an upholstered sewer. Now, I saw sin for the first time in my life. And I opened up that show with Sly and the Family's on, I want to take you higher, real quickly. Down, 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 down. And I'm supposed to say, feeling getting stronger. But what came out of me blew me, blew me away. I went, well, everybody in this place is going to hell. <laughs> That's a true story. And people smoking dope, they went, wow, man, we're going to hell, man. That's a true story. And the drummer, he told, he told uh, the, uh, the lead guitar, but grab him, he's, he's, he's tripping, he, he's on some bad drugs. So anyway, I closed out that session, I, I mean that set, and Jimmy said, what happened, man? With all, what happened, man? I said, J I met Jesus. He went, wow, man. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. From that day, I knew something had happened. But I couldn't explain it. Because when you're not taught, you don't know. You know yeah, you, but what, what happened with that bottle every day? What happened with the drugs? Instantly, what happened to the womanizing? Instantly delivered, completely. I mean, I shut down. I told Kathy, I said, I said, let's go to church tomorrow. This was on a Saturday night, Labor Day weekend, 1974. She thought, my God, you're going to church? Now, I went, you know how we found that church? We followed the church bus. <laughs> and now you got to understand, I, can I stand up a little bit? You had on, a, you know, the embroidery, you know, the typical 1970 tie-dye T-shirt, you know, all that kind of stuff. We followed the church. But you know what's the first thing I did when I was a Christian? No. Pay tithe. Didn't even know it. I had on a, I, I had on a, a, a Levi jacket. Listen to the man preach, and he, it was this little small church. And to make a long story short, he had someone dismissed, and he walked to the back to shake people's hands. And he said something that really shocked me. He said, you know, we're believing God. And I thought, believe in God? I never heard that before, believe in God? So at the end of this, uh, I was the last one to shake his hand. I said, you said you will believe in God. What do you believe in God for? And now you got to understand how I look. I don't look like I got money, but I got money. Because the rock world has got a lot of money in it. And he's looking at me going... And I said, what do you believe in God for? I could see he had a confused look. He said, well, we need some things for Sunday school. I said, well, how much do you need? He said, well, we need about $8,000. You could see it on his face. Like, what am I telling this hippie kid? I was 24 <laughs> years old. Now, I said, hey, you remember those, old, those uh, 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 what do they call Levi jackets? Had them big pockets? Everything. We, I just reached into my pocket, and I pulled out this ball of cash. I had just made $80,000 for nine weeks of work. Hmm. So I gave him $8,000. And hundred dollar bill. He's going. And I looked at him. I said, "You don't buy drugs with a check." 
That's what I said. You, you buy them with cash. That's the first thing I did after I got born again. And I've been doing it ever since. You know, <laughs> isn't that amazing? Jesse, when we come back, I, you have such a childlike, simplistic yes. faith. You, you sit down, you have conversations yes. with God. Not necessarily, we understand, not necessarily the audible voice, but you know mm -hmm. God's voice. And so many would love to be able to hear God's voice Ooh, yes. with the problems that you have. You remember, I, how do I know you have problems? I'm a member of the same race. It's called the human race. Right. Of course you have problems. But if you knew you could sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus, you wouldn't have a problem. Am I right? I want to find out how he hears God's voice, and he says what the Bible says. God's not a respecter of persons. So Jesse says anything that God yeah. does for him, you can do. And you can do it better. Be right back. We will return with more of our special presentation of One on One with Jesse Duplantis and Sid Roth in just one moment. The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. People are astounded at the miracles they've seen others receive on our TV programs. Now, viewers are experiencing that same touch of God, and you can too. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. Access our life-changing specials led by top world-class teachers, or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Television schedules were fine for my parents' generation. With the ISN app, I can watch what I want on my schedule. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough, your healing, your miracle. Download the free ISN app today. And now, back to our special presentation of One on One with Jesse Duplantis and Sid Roth. I, I wish you'd been a fly in the wall when I, I actually... This was the second time I've met you, but the first time I met you, it was like two seconds. But when I met Jesse, I asked him a question. I want to ask you that same question. Okay. I said, short of the amazing transformation that occurred, and by the way, something else happened in addition to getting rid of all those vices when you came to know the Messiah. You didn't really have much of a love for people. What happened? No, I didn't. I, uh, I, I love myself too much. I was raised very poor, and I didn't have time to love people. And I had, I, you do what you got to do. I was going somewhere. I was raised very poor, and I didn't care who I hurt to get where I was going to get. And I know that sound, that, that, in fact, Paul Crouch was in heaven. He said, I've been knowing you for years. You're not that kind of man. I said, the man I'm talking about died. Yeah. See, I, we carry eternity around with us, Sid. I brought Jesus with me into this studio today. You see what I'm saying? And you know, you said before the break that I'm like a child. I really am because children are born believers. And they just believe everything you say until you teach them to doubt. So when God tells me to do something impossible, I go, okay. So simple that you need a good theologian to help you misunderstand it. And that's true. But you... you <laughs> What happens to someone like you that's TV all, the, all over the world, uh, and you go and you're having a nice dinner with your wife, and a couple of TV fans walk up to you and say, can I take your picture with my camera? <laughs> Everyone's got a camera today, oh, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I say yes. Let me tell you something. You people didn't have to come here today. And I think a lot of you preachers that think, you know, that let me bless you with my presence, you could have stayed home. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> And I mean that sincerely. When people come up to you, it's called being nice. I love what Jesus did. I don't want to be a disciple. I want to be a Christ person. I mean, the disciple said, get these kids out of here. Jesus had to jump on the kid. Leave them alone. Permit the children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. So when people come up to me, it's an honor. You're never too big no. for that. No, no. You got to stay small in your own eyes. And that's scriptural, and it'll work every time. It's called 
Uh, I must decrease. Right. He must increase. Yes. Yes. That's true. Jesse, I asked you, beyond coming to know the Lord, the, 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 the thing that pops in your head is the most supernatural thing that happened to you was... After I got born again, I was at Terrebonne Full Gospel Temple. It's a church. It was a full gospel church. We, I got out of the music business. And I wanted to see God. We never read the Bible until we got saved. We were told, don't read the Bible. I don't know if you've been Catholic. Now the Catholics read the charismatic move. They read Bibles. Then don't read the Bible. You'll go crazy. Only the priest can interpret the Bible. Make a long story short, I began to read, and I was just fascinated with Scripture. I mean, I was fast. I said, look at this. And I mean, they thought I couldn't understand this. I can understand this. Well, anyway, I, 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 God, I saw how God showed himself to people. And I thought, why don't he show himself to me? And then I read that scripture, he's no respect to person. So I began to hound God, for lack of a better way to say it. I want to see you. I want to talk to you. Uh, how, how often did you say that to him? I'm going uh, to say this is conservative at least 200 times. During this period, hmm. I was irritated. I said, listen, I stayed up last night and you didn't come. <laughs> I mean, I thought he had to come at night. I don't know. <laughs> I just thought he did. I, you know, you crazy thing. And to make a long, I went to a revival and there was a preacher. He said, young man, I was young in those days, you know, I was uh, 25 years old. And to make a long story short, he says, the Lord told me that you've been asking to see him. And I thought to myself, okay, come on, buddy. Come on. He said, the Lord is coming to see you. You'll be sleeping, and your maid, he called Kathy the maid, she wouldn't <laughs> like, but anyway, uh, uh, the maid, and she will not wake up. Now, this is the most supernatural thing that happened to me other than my salvation. So I stayed up all that night, nothing happened. Two weeks, nothing happened. I was so frustrated. I didn't call the man that he missed God. I didn't know that. How do you miss God? I didn't know nothing about that. And then one night, I went to bed, and I always sleep on my stomach, and I about ready to go to sleep. All of a sudden, wind began to blow, Sid. When I say wind, I'm talking wind. It blew the curtains up on top the rods. It was blowing through. I'm going to get goosebumps. Thank Jesus. Blowing through my skin, coming up under my nails, blowing out of my face. And I, I, I was on the bed, and I was like pinned. And I went, my God. And the Lord, I heard him. This is audible. This is not, this is not vision. This is all physical. I'm seeing the curtain flying up. He said, you asked to see me. Turn around. And I went like this. No, gee, whoa. <laughs> I wasn't scared. I just was, I was freaking out about the best way. And he asked me three times. And I, I, he, the second time he said, you asked to see me turn around. And I went, God, my God. I was pinned. I thought, Kathy will see you. So I started hitting Kathy with my fist. I said, get up. And Kathy is a well, very well, light. Well, did you really hit Put her? a bruise on her this big. Okay. <laughs> That's the only time I ever hit my wife. <laughs> I'm hitting her. And she's going like this. <laughs> and I mean, she's a very light sleeper. Finally, the last time he said, you asked to see me. Wind blowing. My God, I'll never forget that as long as I ever lived. He, Turn around. And I said, Lord, forgive me. This is, I, you know, I, I, I didn't know what to do. All of a sudden, the wind stopped. And I went like this. And I was so mad at myself. I said, you stupid, stupid. <laughs> you asked God to come see you. wouldn't even turn around. And I hit Kathy again. And she goes, what? I said, you missed it. You missed it. She said, what do you mean? I said, God was in the room. But no, you got to sleep all the time. You understand? And Sid, to make a long story short, I got up, went into the, uh, my uh, living room, and I sat down. I was so frustrated with myself. God had come to my house. He had blew the curtains up on the rods, man. I mean, wind went through my skin. You don't have to believe it, but it's true. You know it's true. You can tell, but you're hearing it now. Make a long story short, I start, then I heard him in my spirit like you normally do. I said, God, I'm sorry I didn't turn around. He said, I'm glad you didn't. It's better that you believe me and not see me. That is probably the most fantastic supernatural thing to happen to other than my salvation. Did you get that? He said, you don't have to see me. Without faith, you cannot right. please me. Yeah. He didn't say, uh, you can't please me without being healed. He didn't say you can't please me without having a lot of right, money. Right. He didn't say you can't please me without having a family that's in line. He just said the one thing we can do, faith. Yeah. Without faith, yeah, you cannot please me. It's impossible. For God to say it's impossible. It's really impossible. Well, Sid, since then, I've seen the Lord many times. I've seen many angels. And I'm not bragging on that. I mean, I see these things. Kenneth Copeland told me, he said, how do you see it, Jesse? I said, I, like you. I hear the audible voice of God. If you've ever been in one of my servants and I start moving in the Holy Ghost, you'll see me do this. Because it's, he's talking. 
it's not like an earpiece. I, that's wrong. I could just hear what he's saying. It's audible to me. And, uh, and, All right, and how can we get to oh, that that's point? Fair. You see, you come as a child. You become childlike, not childish. You see, Christianity has become childish instead of childlike. I said, Lord, I want more than a, fel a relationship. That's called being born again. I want a fellowship. He said, well, talk to me. You know why God don't get to talk to people? Because you're praying. I'm going to shock you when I say that. You're praying so much you don't give him time to talk. You go to, oh, Jesus. Oh, you got one of them come to Jesus meeting. Oh, Lord God. And then you stop praying, and you, he's about ready to talk to you, and you get up and you walk off. <laughs> and he goes like this. He goes. Uh, uh. So I have conversations, Sid. I said, Lord, I want to know some things. Yeah, but what happens if he's not answering you? Do you continue the conversation? Oh, he does answer. That's, he wants to talk to you more than you want to talk to him. My granddaughter, I only have one daughter and one granddaughter. When she calls me, she calls me grandfather. She goes, she's nine and a half. Grandfather. I go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, because no one ever called me grand till she was born. And her child going to make me great. <laughs> See, so every, I'm going to say this. Every time I've said, Lord, I, I'm not exaggerating. Every time I've ever said, Lord, he said, what? He said, let's talk. What do you want to talk about? I said, I need to know some things. What about this? What about that? And I, Kathy has heard me. I'd be laughing in my study. He's, he's actually very funny. Look at some of the people he made. <laughs> I mean, you know, you think about that. You think about that. Who yeah, ever, yeah, who you ever thought that a Cajun and a Jew would be on the same program? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't even understand what he's saying. <laughs> just saying so. But I, I just talked to him. Like, when I met you, just uh, 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 I immediately... For lack of a better way to say, I got, I got close to you. I, got his, I wanted to talk to you. We, you know, and God is attracted by that. But see, if you go through all that religious rigmarole stuff, oh, most gloriously heavenly Father God. No, 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 no. No, Jesus. I, I call him Jesus. He called me Jesse. I never call him. He never, he's never said Reverend Duplantis, and I never said Reverend Christ. <laughs> you see, it's, it's personal. It's fellowship. How do I get to know Sid Roth? Not by relationship. I met you there. To know you, we got to eat dinner. We start hanging out. It's called fellowship. But for lack of a better way to say it, I hang out with the Lord. And I tell you what, you look at one of the happiest men ever walked the face of this earth. That doesn't mean trouble don't come. I just don't pay no attention to the devil. I ain't got time for that fool. I am not going to pay no attention to him. He's defeated, restricted, and rejected. And he's awaiting confinement. Why do I want to talk to a loser? He's a loser. And he's nothing. And go read the book of Ezekiel. And when the world's going to see him, they're going to say, this, this is what deceived the nation. This. He's nothing. He's on the limits of retardation. <laughs> he is dying daily, and you are growing daily. Yeah, yeah. You understand? How, you want me to prove it? He didn't even know. He couldn't even recognize Jesus when he saw him. He went, uh, if thou be the son of God, do something. Turn that stone into bread. Jesus said no. Now, Sid, he could have turned that mountain to a loaf of bread with a log of butter running down the, the valley of it. But he said no. He said no. He ain't got time to talk to the fool. You see what I'm saying? And that's what he is. Well, you got to be stupid to leave heaven, to cause a rebellion. I'm going to tell you something you've never heard before. You know why sometimes things go real good? I asked the Lord about that. I said, you know, Lord, things have been going real great with the message. Everything good. I said, where's the devil? He said he's putting out fires. Now, these are my conversations. I said, he's what? I said, he's putting out fires. I said, what do you mean? He sowed rebellion in heaven. He's got rebellion in his camp. Listen to me. I like that. Oh, listen to me. See, Bible said what you sow, you reap. That includes angels. He said, they got, see, he's been lying to them boys, and they left heaven, and they said, you don't own everything. See, I, I'm, I've been debt-free since 1982. That just drives the devil nuts, because he's told all his demons that he owns everything, and they say, well, not Jesse's place. <laughs> And he gets, so they try to rebel again. He has to put them down. He has to get them back in line. That's why everything's so good. But now he's going to come back. Because all he's got, the only way he can hurt God is try to hurt you. But if you don't pay no attention to him, Sid. In, in other words, no. you don't go tell people, oh, this, I'm sick and this is going no. on. It's not that you're denying it. You just don't want to give him any publicity. The devil attacked me last night in my body. I mean, I'm never sick. I never, I'm never, but last night I just began to feel uh, scratchy. And I said, no, 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 no. Who do you think you are to come and touch this body? Because I have a spirit housing a soul and clothing. This is my body. You get your ugly hands out of here. Now, and I, now people say, who, who do you think you are? How much time you got? Yeah. 
Because I got to go from Genesis to Revelation. Because every, I am in every verse, you in every verse of that book. He wrote it for you. He didn't write it for himself. So I just accept it the way it is. I am, I'm very childlike when it comes to believing the unbelievable. I want you to answer this question. Uh, someone does not believe they have that relationship that you have with God. They've been a believer 20 years. Mm -hmm. They have prayed. They've right. done every method and system they know. Give them some advice. You've been religiously brainwashed <laughs> instead of New Testament taught. See, you're going through the rigmarole of religiosity. God ain't interested. You know, God never created Christianity. Man did that. God created Christ. God sowed Christ so he could have Christians. See, Jesus was a seed so we could be his family. And I love telling that to Jewish people. They say, you Jewish? I said, I'm adopted. <laughs> you adopted? I said, yeah, yeah. He made me an offer. He made me an offer I couldn't refuse. You understand? <laughs> And when you understand that, now we laugh at that, but take the humor out and listen to what I'm saying. People say, why do you use humor so much? Because the word of God is a double-edged sword. One side cut the devil, the other side cuts you. So what you have to do, I mix it with a little anesthesia. <laughs> so you don't feel it when it's being cut off. All of a sudden you go, like old Robert used to tell me, Jesse, you got me laughing. Then I go home and go, that man just cut my guts out. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Yes, and that's the reason for it. That's why I'm on television. I'm not interested in people knowing I lost all that after I got born again. And I got to a point. Now I have to watch what I say because I get it. Now that's shocking. I have to watch what I say. I get it. The anointing of increases on me. Don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault. It's he that gave me power. My daughter said this. She said, Daddy, everything you touch prospers. I said, you know why, Jody? Because I create my world and then I walk in it. I don't let other people create the world around me, Sid. See, you got the Sid Roth show. You create this show. You know, I mean, it'd be kind of odd if you'd say, you come in and ask somebody, oh, what y'all want us to do? <laughs> no, you know you got producers and directors and things of that right. nature. See, so I do that in my daily walk with God. He said, what are we going to do today? I said, well, Lord, uh, don't you know? He said, no, you're my hands, you're my feet. He gave me this one time. He said, the heart of God is the Father. The face of God is the Son, Jesus voice of God is the Holy Ghost, but the hands of God is the church. Do you see that? Okay, when we come back, I have to tell you, I, I've been doing this a long time. I've heard a lot of supernatural stories, yes, but your mom yeah. takes the cake. <laughs> I, I want you to tell me what happened. He's in a bar. He's as unsaved oh. as a, a human can be. He, Ooh, he's down geez. in Mexico. Well, and no this so is without a doubt the most supernatural thing. I, yeah. You had some mother. We'll be right back. <laughs> We will return with more of our special presentation of One on One with Jesse Duplantis and Sid Roth in just one moment. Did you know that God has given everybody in this world life for a purpose? Did you realize that you were born to bring something special into this world that nobody but you can bring? Do you understand you were created to shine a light that has never shown before? God has revealed powerful keys to Jesse that he wants to share with you so you can access all the promises and blessings of God like never before. Call now to get Jesse Duplantis' two book package, The Big 12, Jesse's personal confidence building principles for achieving total success and wanting a God you can talk to. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9523. Through Jesse's book, The Big 12, you will begin to determine what you truly want, establish a goal to fulfill your heart's desire, understand how God will give you strategies in the midst of wilderness times that will bring victory and success in achieving His plan for your life. Learn to avoid seeking the approval of others and instead to begin to hear the still, small voice of God. Understand the importance of establishing a goal and allow God to give you a passion to fulfill it. Find out the importance of dwelling in the 
brand of the best. Understand how judging others opens you up to distraction, oppression, and stalls your ability to walk in victory. Learn the power of taking others along with you as you walk in success and so much more. When Jesse Duplantis was a little boy in church, all he ever wanted was a God he could talk to. Now through his book, Wanting a God You Can Talk To, you will understand the many different ways God speaks to us. Find out how God speaks through the Bible, visions, dreams, and the inner witness, and how to make this a daily part of your everyday life. Begin to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, allowing God to communicate His voice through you. Understand the wisdom Jesse will impart to you on how to draw closer to God than you've ever been before. Find out how you can spend every day talking to God and hearing His voice and direction. Get to know God as a real friend and as your Heavenly Father. As you read Jesse's books, you will receive an impartation of boldness and confidence to step into your God-given destiny and purpose. Don't miss out on getting Jesse Duplantis' two-book package, The Big 12, Jesse's personal confidence-building principles for achieving total success and wanting a God you can talk to. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9523. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9523 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. And now, back to our special presentation of One on One with Jesse Duplantis and Sid Roth. Yeah, yeah, you know, this fella saw so much as a child, and he rebelled. Yes. When, like, you were telling me, and this isn't the story I'm going for, but it's so good. 14, what did you see your mom do? My, we were in, in our house, and real quickly, uh, we were raised very poor. So mom, my daddy and my mom in the truck to burn gas. <laughs> and she was washing dishes, and she just stopped. And she said, y'all get in the truck, me and my oldest brother, me and Wayne. She, and she and drove, this was down in Venice, Louisiana. My dad worked for Getty Oil Company in those days. And she drove down the levee. She's just driving. I thought, what's this woman doing? And she stopped. She said, y'all stay in the truck. She got out the truck and walked down. And then she walked down the levee. And there was a 16-year-old girl about ready to commit suicide and because she was pregnant. Now, back in them days, that was the worst of the worst. And she come down. She said, girl, she said, you're not going to do that. God sent my mama to that girl. You ready for that? She said, my daddy. She said, I'll take care of your daddy. Mama didn't know that man. <laughs> she said, you get in that truck. So he, she brought that woman, that girl, up and out. And boy, me and Wayne, we just sitting like, drove what, where you live. She walked up to that man. And she said, your daughter's pregnant. So what? What else have you done that nobody knows about? Who do you think? She ate his lunch. <laughs> I mean, mama was tough. I mean, she was tough. <laughs> and anyway, to make a long story short, that lady, I met her. I totally forgot that. I'm talking... 30 years later, she was in one of my meetings. She came up to me. She said, you remember me? I said, no, ma'am. She said, I was the 16-year-old girl. These are my three children, and this is my husband. Your mother saved my life. That was my mom. Do you think that's something? Tell me about the time you're in a bar in okay. Mexico. Now, you, you weren't in the bar <laughs> preaching. Okay. Well, well, no, no. What happened was, you know, I was a rock entertainer. This is in, uh, we were in McAllen, Texas, and we was going to go across the border to Reynosa, Mexico, to Boys Town. We're going to chase the red light district. Don't look at me weird. I was a sinner. That's what you do. So we went into this. There's no way my mother knew where I was. I was playing rock music. So we're in there. Now, I, I can't describe what's going on there, but there's naked girls dancing on the tables and all this kind of stuff and all kinds of stuff. Now, my name then was Jerry Jackson, J-A-X-O-N. Look good in lights. Jesse the Planets is Cajun. You know, the uh, managers and agents want to do that. All of a sudden, in this bar in Reynosa, Mexico, in Boys Town, this guy said, Is there Jesse Duplantis here? <laughs> and I listened to that. And, uh, and then he said, Is there Jesse Duplantis here? And Jimmy Spencer was my drummer. He said, That's your real name. I said, Yeah, but Jimmy, didn't nobody know who we Who knows my name? <laughs> he said, You know anybody? No. Is there Jesse Duplantis here? I said, Yeah. And I got up and walked to the phone. I went, hello. And my mother said, I see you, you little devil from hell in that <laughs> terrible place. You better get out of there because God's going to kill every one of you. I went, okay, mama. Okay. Wait, 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 Jesse. <laughs> yeah, that's a how true did story. She, how did she have the phone number? How did she know who, where you were? I, I, after it was all said and done, I went home. I said, how did you know that? There's no way you could know that. Bar, 
Oh, and Renosi, she said, the Lord spoke to me. Your boy, he, she, he, the Lord showed her where I was. I came back and I said, Jimmy, we got to get out of here because God's going to kill us. <laughs> we got out of there. That is a true story. That's impossible to happen. But my mother had a sensitive ear and she would see these things. Now, you know, when she wasn't intelligent enough because, you know, she only had a fourth grade education. As if she had to quit school to take care of the family, you know, her family. And she was the oldest girl. Make a long story short, but when she got born again, I think what mom would talk to God and I think that transferred to me because she told me, you getting saved whether you like it or not. It's just your tough luck. You were born to me. I got the promise of my family <laughs> to a thousand generations. You little heathen from hell, you're going to get saved. And I got saved. Okay. Jesse, I have an idea that there is, you are creating with the humor and with your stories, just a hunger for people to have the same relationship with God that you do. Is there a prayer that you can pray to jumpstart us? No, uh, what it is is that you just sit down and try to, and get out of the religious way of thinking. Sit on your couch, wherever you are in your house, and just say, Lord, I need to talk to you. I want to be your friend. See, that's another thing I read, that Abraham was a friend of God. Wait a minute. If Abraham can be a friend, how come I can't be a friend? You know what the Lord told me? He said, I need friends, Jesse. Hmm. I need, see, most people pray to him and never talk to him. Now, I want to tell you something. What's going to happen? You're going to feel foolish. You're going to feel silly because your intellectual activity, your range and research, your induction and reasoning, that's all in the mind. But see, you're getting out of your mind. You say, Lord, all of a sudden, you're going to hear something. You're going to feel, first, you'll sense the presence. He'll come in that room. You, I mean, you're going to get some goosebumps. You go, whoa, because see, the body can't handle anything spiritual. It just reacts. It doesn't know what to do. But that spirit goes, <laughs> it'll pull real quick. Your spirit is in 100% contact with God if you're born again. Yeah. Well, your problem is, is in your soulless realm. You want me to prove it to you? If you go to a mall today, you see somebody in a wheelchair, ready for this? Your spirit says, go over there, grab them, pull them out. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Your spirit goes, yes. Your mind says, control yourself, fool. You crazy? <laughs> you're going to get a lawsuit here if you don't want yourself. <laughs> you see, that's the intellectual activity. So what I did, I didn't try it. I just sat down and said, Abraham was a friend of God. Now, God, I got to know you, not just know about you, not just have a, this relationship. And I thank you for saving me. I just need to talk to you. And I'll never, oh, my, that's the Holy Ghost there. Is that okay to say that on this? Uh, some, it's too some late. Net, some networks, <laughs> some networks won't allow that to happen. No, um, no, no, uh, no. You're on the right network. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Lord, I just, I just need to talk to you. He said, let's talk. He said, tell me. I said, I got to ask a question. First question I've asked God in my first conversation. You know, there's a scripture you say you always was. He said, that's right. Just like this. That's right. Sound like a, that's right. Kind of a deep voice. I said, my mind don't understand that. He said, well, let me help you. I created myself and I broke the mold. I went, I still didn't get that. I didn't get that. <laughs> he said, you will. Never thinking that our fellowship would progress even further. Now, you, have you seen my television show? Many of you? Have you ever saw me sick? Depressed, disappointed, discouraged. I don't have time for that. I am in the world, but I'm not of the world. That doesn't mean that I don't have trouble in life. I just don't pay that attention to that. I just said, this is what the Lord said. And you know what? On, in this set here, if you see me sweating, it's because the anointing will push water out your body, buddy. I want to tell you, it's a good way to lose weight. <laughs> Praise God. Let me just say. And what happened, that's, it's a very simple process. It's like a child running up to you and just sit in your lap. And I have children do that to me all the time. They sense something. I had the other day, I was at the Cheesecake Factory, and a little Islam boy, a Muslim boy, they had a whole family, the little boy looked at me and he went. <laughs> and I went. And boy, his mother, you know, he come right up to me, and he's just looking at me. I said, hey, little man. And he, just, he wanted to hug me. I let him hug me. You know, and, and I said, oh, Jesus, let this family see the Christ in me. Because the only Jesus some people will ever see is the Jesus in you, or the Jesus in me. You see, the Lord's healing people in here right now. Yeah, yeah. There's some people here you got a lump in your breast and you're worried about that turning into cancer. 
That's not going to happen. When you go home today, right now, that's being taken care of. You do a breast examination. Don't holler too loud, but you ain't going to find anything. And he's going to take the fear out of you because fear tolerated is faith contaminated. I refuse to fear. Do you want? Listen to me. I refuse to fear because that's not part of my DNA. And it isn't yours neither, no matter what happens. You see what I'm saying? God is in control, not in control of the earth. One man said, he told me, so you know God's in control. I said, no, he's not. If he was, if he was, there'd be no pornography. He's not in control. He want to know he's in control? In heaven. Ain't no pornography. Ain't no crime. Well, he, God owns it all. No, he don't. No, he don't. Because if he did, you'd have no seed to sow. See? You have to understand who you are. That you are, this planet is under man's domain. Now, the lease is going to run out. Don't misunderstand me. Right now, it's ours. You see what I'm saying? So let's go to the world and preach this gospel to every creature. Not some, to every creature. Well, speaking to every creature, there are many people that are viewing right now that to a degree love God, but they've never had experiential knowledge yeah. of God. And you got your little toes in the water. It's time to jump in. And some of you know you don't know God, know that your sins are not forgiven. Jesse, would you lead them in a sure. prayer? Just like Billy did for you yes, one day. I certainly would. This is my camera right here. Yes. Listen to me. I would never lie to you. I've had too many people lie to me. Listen, I want a God I can talk to. That's why I wrote that book. See, the priest wouldn't let me talk to God. I wanted to talk to God. You don't talk to God. You talk to me. I realized you can talk to God. Believe me, you're going to get saved right now. I want to ask you all to repeat this prayer with me. I want you to repeat this. Your mind may be going, what? Just repeat it. But I want you to repeat it out loud so your mind can hear what your mouth is saying. You ready? Just say this. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sin. I confess my sin before you this day. I denounce Satan and all his works. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth. Jesus rose from the dead. I am saved. Welcome to the family. <laughs> simple. Just simple. You know, while Jesse had words of knowledge, I had a word also. Uh, bones in your fingers, bones in your wrist, carpal tunnel, anything in that part of the body and the hip your hip the pain is gone and the back you just stand up and bend over uh, and you will see that that pain is gone Ooh, that's good Ooh, the, the presence of god <laughs> is here and all things are possible can i say something to you the lord just told me you sure he can. said tell sid roth this i'll give him more strength than he ever had at this age when he, even when he was young, he said, tell him to ask me. And you'll find yourself, you'll feel the cellular structure of your body starting to get stronger and stronger. Because you see, there's much to do and little time to do it in. And you have tapped into something that's supernatural, even though your pro program is called supernatural. And people need to see those things. You see what I'm saying? And God's got to have a vessel. And said, you that vessel. And, and you know what? You belong to God's biological family. I was adopted into the family, but the blood that ran through Jesus when he's on the earth is running through you. But guess what? The father loves his adopted children yes, as does. much as his natural. <laughs> That's right. We have the same <laughs> rights. <laughs> but the Lord told me to tell you, he said, tell him when he lays down and rests at night that while he sleeps, I will put strength in him that he hadn't seen in years. And you'll sleep better. And there are going to be some things that's going to happen in your personal family. I said, what is that, Lord? He said, that's none of your business. That's between me and Sid. And the secret things belong to the Lord. But something's going to happen, and it's going to be for the betterment of it. Oh, thank you, Lord. He said, tell him he's been found faithful. And faithful people I cherish, saith the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. What Jesse prophesied for me. If you will repent to your sins and say, Lord, I want to be faithful. Every promise he made for me, yeah. it's available to you. Yes, it is. You, you just take it.
Yes. You just take it. It's yours. Oh, Jesse, I, you got to tell me this story because okay. it's so amazing. God calls him into ministry. Yes. And for a year, he doesn't get a speaking assignment. <laughs> yes. And right. then he gets angry and starts talking to his telephone. <laughs> yes. Well, tell me about that. The Lord, I was at a church. He said, Sunday morning. Uh, this is when I got out of music business. He said, you walk down there and ask me for a ministry. I said, I, I, I ain't been to Bible school. I don't, I, I'm no preacher. He said, you go down there and you ask me for a ministry. And I just, I said, I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. Finally, a couple of weeks went by. Finally, I went down. I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. No, it was a year. Forgive me. I want this ministry. Now, before I... When he had told me to do that, I was getting people write me, you know, it was the full gospel of businessmen mm -hmm. and all that kind right. of stuff, testimonies and all, because of the rock world. After I said I submit, I didn't get one invitation for a solid year. And in my frustration, that would be January of 76, that, that year. And I said, Lord, I went down in January of 75 and asked for a ministry, uh, 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 you know, and uh, 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 you, why am I, why didn't I get any uh, invitations? He said, you made me wait. Just like that. He said, how you like it? You like it? I said, no. He said, never make me wait again. I said, I'm yours to command, sir. And I'll tell you one thing. When God says do something, I just, like a lot of time, if God tells me to sow a seed, how many times, Kathy, she's right over there. I'll say, Kathy, I want you to write a check. Okay, I'll do it when I get home. No! I, I, I don't mean to holler at I said, wrap, do it now. Wrap that story up about <laughs> what that phone in 30 okay. seconds. 30 seconds. I, I, I went into the ministry. I came home. I quit my job. Don't tell you to do that. Just because Jesse did it. Got home, looked at the phone. I said, ring in Jesus' name. It rang. It was a yellow phone, an old yellow phone. And I thought, this must be my daddy. <laughs> I picked it up, and there was a man at Sabine past uh, Calcasieu Tabernacle in Lake Charles, Louisiana. He said, I was praying, and the Lord said for you to come preach. Can you come tomorrow night? This was a Thursday afternoon. I went there Friday night. And ladies and gentlemen, from that day forward, I have been preaching almost every day. I have over 9,000 requests I can't even get to. I'm trying. I'll get all of them if I can. And I mean, from that point. But you know what? I'm not making God wait no more. And he told me to go on Sid Roth, so I did. <laughs> I'm so glad you did. Aren't you glad he did? Now, let me tell you something. We're going to come right back, and you're going to hear some of the most supernatural things you've ever, 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 ever heard in your life. Be right back. We will return with more of our special presentation of One on One with Jesse Duplantis and Sid Roth in just one moment. Call now to get Jesse Duplantis' two-book package, The Big 12, Jesse's personal confidence-building principles for achieving total success and wanting a God you can talk to. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9523. Through Jesse's book, The Big 12, you will begin to determine what you truly want, establish a goal to fulfill your heart's desire, understand how God will give you strategies in the midst of wilderness times that will bring victory and success in achieving his plan for your life. Understand the importance of establishing a goal and allow God to give you a passion to fulfill it. Find out the importance of dwelling in the land of the best. Understand how judging others opens you up to distraction, oppression, and stalls your ability to walk in victory. Learn the power of taking others along with you as you walk in success. When Jesse Duplantis was a little boy in church, all he ever wanted was a God he could talk to. Now, through his book, Want a God you can talk to, you will understand the many different ways God speaks to us. Find out how God speaks through the Bible, visions, dreams, and the inner witness, and how to make this a daily part of your everyday life. Begin to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, allowing God to communicate His voice through you. Understand the wisdom Jesse will impart to you on how to draw closer to God than you've ever been before. Find out how you can spend every day talking to God and hearing His voice and direction. Get to know God as a real friend and as your heavenly father. As you read Jesse's books, you will receive an impartation of boldness and confidence to step into your God-given destiny and purpose. Don't miss out on getting Jesse Duplantis' two-book package, The Big 12, Jesse's personal confidence.
confidence building principles for achieving total success and wanting a God you can talk to. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9523. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9523 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. And now, back to our special presentation of One-on-One -on -One with Jesse Duplantis and Sid Roth. Once again, before we go off the air, I want to thank our broadcast partners, GB America, METV, and Inspiration TV. Our next ISN live event on November 16th will feature John and Carol Arnott and worship by Roy Fields. Don't miss it. And don't forget, when we leave GB America and Inspiration TV, this program will continue on METV, that's Middle East Television, and ISN, the It's Supernatural Network. So be sure to stay with us to continue watching on ISN. You can just log on to sidroth.org slash ISN or download our free ISN app. Just go to the App Store, type in my name, Sid Roth, S-I-D-R-O-T-H, and touch the orange ISN app. Once you have it, you can watch us anytime, 24-7. Now, you notice we've multiplied a little bit. It's not loaves and fishes, but I have uh, Dr. Keith Ellis over here, and, and those that don't know my friend, Keith Ellis don't know one of the most amazing gifts when he, I, I can say this, when he had, and, and you, know, you know what? A lot of other people can say this. When you have a dream, how, what percentage of your dreams come true? Uh, when God gives me a dream, it's 100%. But he's moving at a new point in, in the spirit and I believe, I have to say this because he's just getting started again with this new level. I believe when you hear something from God, it's going to be 100%. Yeah, I believe that, Sid. Uh, I, I mean, we've even got examples here tonight, like Kevin said, I. Uh, Kevin, can, 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 can he give a testimony? Real quick, Kevin. The Yellow Canary in Africa. Yeah, uh, Keith called me. He 30 didn't know. seconds. Keith called me. He didn't know I was going to South Africa, but he just called me. And he said, I keep seeing yellow canaries. And he said, they're going to be singing um, over you. And, and uh, uh, where are you going next? I said, well, S South Africa. He said, well, that's where the yellow canaries originate from in the mines down there. And so when we were down there, yellow canaries would come up while we we're eating and start singing. <laughs> so, got saved. And healed, right? Yeah, there was oh, a, God, many, but, many salvations. Here's the thing. That yellow canary brings joy. And I'm going to tell you something. A merry heart is good medicine. So you get on the ISN network, and, and I'm going to tell you something. The angels of all of us, the anointing on all of us is going to be compounded. And I believe, and all of these gentlemen had told me that... Any miracle you read in the Bible will be standard, normal. I want you to be normal. Normal is what the Bible has to say. Keith, what did you just tell me? I said the power is here. What does that mean? That means you're going to get some things that you never thought you was going to get. God is going to do some miracles, healing signs, wonders. Jesse Duplantis, I want to say this, Dr. Jesse, Brother Jesse, he walked over there to me and was talking to me, 
And while you were talking to me, you put your hand on my shoulder, and it was like I was getting a sunburn. And I'm feeling it right now being there, Sid. The power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here now. Glory now. To God. Glory. It's here. Yes, it is. Anything can happen. Uh, Jesse, what are you sensing? The power of the Lord's always present. Sometimes it's not always received, but it's always present. And if you need a miracle, whether it's spiritual, physical, or financial, just say something. The Bible said when you pray, believe that you receive. Not when you get it, not when you see it, but when you pray. How many of you know how to pray? You got a miracle waiting on you. Just that simple. Kevin, what's going to happen during this segment? Well, the Lord told me that uh, people need to get over themselves. And so it's, <laughs> it's, it's, time, so it's time to jump in Amen. to the river of life and just enjoy yourself here in this presence and take it home with you because there's a lot of people that need this. Yeah, you know, Kevin, uh, you had downloaded in you when you were in heaven things that you don't even know yet, but it's ready to come out. Uh, and I've noticed this about you. It's, it's like you tell your story of what happened when you were in heaven, but it's a continuous story. I mean, it's still happening of everything that you've learned from the Lord. If you could just share one, one nugget, one nugget that's going to change someone's life, what would it be? Well, the one thing that I learned from the Lord was is that we don't ask for enough. We think that we're going to somehow dim the lights of heaven when we ask for too much. And the Lord, the Lord took the limits off me. He said in Mark 9, 23, he said, do you notice there's no asterisk beside that verse? It says, if you'll believe, nothing shall be impossible to you. Did you notice that there's no even Greek scholar that can discredit that? He said, there's no limit in heaven. He said, if you have limits in your faith, it's not me. That's what, that's what I got back from heaven, is, is that the level is, you're setting the level because there is no limit with God. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I say something? Uh, Kevin, what Kevin just said is so true, because the Bible said he's dealt to us the measure of faith, not a measure. See, the churches preach a measure. No, no, it's the measure. Everything Jesus has, you have. Now, are you willing to exercise it? You know, I have all the same muscles as Mr. Yunus' verse. <laughs> what you laugh for? I know, I know why you laugh because you can't see them, but they're there. But you know why you can't see them? I didn't work them. Whoa. But they're there. It's the same thing with your faith. That's what the Lord was telling you. Mm -hmm. you see, now he's my, one of my spiritual sons. I had Kevin when I was 66 years old. <laughs> and uh, what a blessing. I turned out just fine. Didn't you I? turned out perfect. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I feel like the Lord to just say that. Ask him. Come on. I mean, you can never impoverish God. You got over 7,000 promises in the Bible. You use about 15 of them your whole life. Oh, you have the whole 7,000. People are going to think you're crazy. It doesn't make no difference what they think, but it makes all the difference in what God says and what God thinks. You see? So what do you want? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Listen, don't, don't ask God for a need. What are you doing that for? That's a waste of spiritual energy. He said he supply how many need? Oh. How many need? What are, you, what are you wasting spiritual energy on need? Don't tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. Because when you get what you want, you destroy all your need. When you have what you want, you don't even think about need. I know what you're thinking. That's greed. No, no. That's growth. The law is my shepherd. I shall not. Oh, see? He's going to take care of the need stuff. It's the one stuff. Well, I don't want to get greedy. Trust God enough to know that you're not going to do that if you're listening to his voice. And when you understand that, when you have what you want, you don't even think about need. Think about that for a minute. You know why people are happy in heaven? They got what they want. If you tell your husband what you need for Christmas, you're going to get a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> that's not for you. That's for the house. <laughs> tell him what you want. That's not greed. That's growth. Jesus never asked his father for a need. He told his father what he wanted. If, you have a, if you're a grandparent or a, mo a mother and you're in a grocery store and a child says, Mama, Grandma, I want some ice cream, is that greed? No, that's just a child wanting some ice cream, right? Why do you think it's greed to tell your Heavenly Father what you want? Oh, excuse me. You're not God's adults. You're God's children. Always remember that. And all he wants to do is be a blessing to you. 
just ask him. You're not going, he's got warehouses so, so full waiting to turn loose on you, spiritual, physical, and financial. You can get so full of the love of God and health, you're going to have a hard time dying. <laughs> Do you hear what I, Jesus couldn't go to funeral, said he mess him up. You, you, you try, you're trying to embarrass him. Jesus said, get up. Man said, I never wanted to be dead anyway, so I'm just going to go on home. <laughs> Listen to me. I mean, we laugh at that, but that is serious business. And there's a generation that won't see death. Is it us? I'm believing for that. Yeah. I ain't afraid to die, but I'm believing to go into rapture. One man told me that the other day, I don't believe in a rapture. I said, stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse going out on the first load. <laughs> okay, I feel something. I have a seer over here. What, what am I feeling? What's going on here in the invisible world? And use your mic. Okay, there are angels ascending and descending. Glory Some of your God. prayers have already been answered. They're being answered right now. You know, Jesse just said something. He talked about, you know, people may think you're crazy, but you know what? You have four crazy friends right here, right <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> he preached that sermon. That's right. Four did crazy you, friends. Did, you know, I, my wife passed away uh, back at uh, December the 12th, of, uh, right before Christmas. She loved Christmas. And from 1983 to then, God healed her over and over and over again. I mean, over and over again. And I was grieving. So, I mean, I, mean, I just missed her because we were together every day in ministry. Seen tens of thousands of people uh, healed and saved. Uh, how, how old were you when you first met her? Fifteen. I'm 62. We were together every day. We, I mean, we just, she was on fire. I forgot to ask her out for a date. And first, I tried to ask her out for a day, and, you know, she said to me, I said, uh, I want to ask you how the weather is. She made me so nervous. She was so beautiful. And then she said, the weather? And I said, I want to ask you out for a date, but you probably wouldn't want to go with me. She said, I will if you'll go to church. And I got born again, and we started on fire for God. I mean, we started on fire. I really thought I could win the whole world. I did. I really did. I, I thought I could get them healed, get them saved. My son was raised from the dead out of a coma when every doctor pulled the plug. I wrote a book called One Minute with God, and, and God even brought my wife back and let her three, live three years to write that book for me. And then uh, she went was, to heaven with wait, a smile on her face. Was your son brain dead? Yes, he was. All right, and well, tell me about his, uh, where he is now education-wise. Yeah, it's a, he, he works for a, a major university. He's just fixing to get another degree. When he came back from the dead, when I went back to those doctors after Jesus appeared to me, and I told them, I looked at them, I said, Jesus appeared to me, and he told me he's going to be a miracle. They said, sir, we unplugged him from the ventilator. He has no brain activity. I said, Jesus said he's coming back and he's going to be better than before. And you know what? After he came back, they had us carry him around to places all summer long where, where doctors would study him because when he came back as a six-year-old boy, he had a genius of an I, uh, the, uh, adult genius IQ. He's always made straight A's ever since then. Been in college ever since then, just knocking him down, making straight A's. And you know what? God let Cheryl come back. She was in a coma. They said she can't, can't live. She had 20 minutes to live. God brought her back. She lived over three years and wrote one minute with God. And the power of God is on that book. People are being healed all over the world. All over the world. Uh, Jesse, you told him, Keith something on the phone that yeah. just got rid of his depression. Can I impose upon you to tell us that? Sure. What happened was Kevin, uh, uh, we live in the same place. He said, you, I'd like you to call Keith Ellis. I said, I had met Keith before, but we didn't have a real big relationship. I just mm -hmm. met him a few yeah. times. And the Lord said, you're going to pull that man out of a hole today. <laughs> I said, I can do that. <laughs> Got him on the phone, began to talk to him, and he was talking. I said, I said whoa, whoa, let, let, let me tell you something about your wife. You got to understand something. We think that we think. They, they're gone a long time. No, no. We live a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week thing. God says a thousand years is one day with the Lord. Now, your wife went home December the 12th last year. Uh -huh. All right. She's only been in heaven about maybe uh, a minute. Wow. See, because now you get on God's time. Mm -hmm. He has to help us understand. A thousand years is one day. Is a, you know how long Jesus has been gone from the earth? A weekend. <laughs> You see, but you don't think of it like that. You no. think 24 hours a day, seven days. And I told her, if the rapture church took 
place right now. Keith Ellis with that microphone, he's saying, his wife would turn around and say, Keith, look at this. Can you see that? So if you've had someone that's transitioned to heaven, my mother went home with the Lord in 1982. She's only been in heaven about 30 minutes. Wow. On God's time. Wow. You, t you equate a thousand years as one day with the Lord, you'll find out how quick. I mean, to us, it's a thousand years. The millennial kingdom is only one day. It's a thousand years in God's way of yeah. thinking. You know, you told me something that I've, I've, I'm pondering because I told you the f my favorite member of your family was Mom. your mother. But your mother, before she even knew the Messiah, knew something about the Jew and Israel. What did she know? <laughs> what happened was I was five years old. My brother was seven. We, you didn't have malls in those days. You, 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 you shopped downtown. We were walking downtown. Now, we were Catholic, you understand? Walking downtown, and she had my hold of my hand, holding of Wayne, and she, there were some Hasidic Jews in New Orleans, you know, one of the girls. And she stopped, and she looked, and she said, Jesse, Wayne, that's God's chosen people, just like that. And I went, okay. I said, what are we, mama? She said, we're heathens. <laughs> That's what she said. But she recognized God's chosen people. Oh, can I say that, Lord? Mm. So come Christmas, and this is under the direction of the Lord, give something to God's biological family. Aww. Be a blessing to Israel. Yeah. Be a blessing to a Jewish person. It's now, the biological family. I can tell you as a fact that those that are involved in humanitarian aid of any kind to Jewish people, especially now in history, I mean, there's, everything is the right. Yes, there's no time in heaven, but there is time here. And this is the set time to favor Zion. Oh, now, if that would be a blessing, Jesse, mm -hmm. how much greater blessing when the Jewish people receive their Messiah. It will cause life from the dead, resurrection power on this planet. Yes, yes, I believe yes. if you go one step further and share the Messiah with Jewish, say, I'm a Jew. And there's one thing I know, there's only one God. It's called the Shema. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Achad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. One God, one Messiah, one Ruach HaKodesh, Spirit of the living God. There's not a Messiah for the Jews, a Messiah for the Christians, a Messiah for the Muslims. No, no, no. Uh, one Come God on. for the preaching. whole world, one Messiah preaching. for the Preach. whole world, the Jew, Jesus. And when you share Jesus with a Jewish person, it's going to cause life from the dead, Amen. resurrection power in that Jew, but it's going to cause life from the dead, resurrection power Come in the favor of hey, God in your life God. has happened to Jesse <laughs> DePlantis because Hallelujah. his mother knew the truth and yes. the truth set that whole family life free. That's right. 100%. Isn't that good? Right. Well, Keith, you told me if I would let you share something, God was going to do something special. I'm calling you on that. Okay, let's see here. Well, you know, the Lord's moving so powerfully here. Jesse preached a sermon one time, Brother Jesse. Uh, all you need is four crazy friends. <laughs> Now, and what, what does the word crazy mean? Meshuggah. Meshuggah. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. I want you at home to say that. I want to teach you one Hebrew word. Meshuggah. Meshuggah. Now that you learned it, it means crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you see, all four of us are just, we're just that crazy for God. We, we are together. I mean, Jesus took three guys and went up on a mountain. Four of them was together, and something supernatural started happening. Glory to God. You understand Moses and Elijah appeared. Well, let me tell you something. They've been dead for hundreds of years. Think about this now. God put us together tonight supernaturally. Well, Jesse was praying. Sid was praying. Kevin was praying. I was praying. And I really, you know, I'm, I've been going through a lot because my wife did everything for me. She, she let me rest, pray, preach, because I'd pray for hours and hours in them lines for people. And we had creative miracles. But I want to tell you something. What I saw the other night. I was praying for this show, and I, I kept hearing Jesse's sermon on, all you need is four crazy friends. <laughs> and I thought, 
about the night I was so sad and I was crying. My son was driving me around in the car. My other son, Pastor Eli, my pastor's here tonight, and his wife, Kim, they brought me up here tonight, and I praise God for that. And pa in fact, Pastor Eli never saw an angel, and when my wife was passing, an angel appeared behind him and scared him to pieces. <laughs> You're right over there. He it literally happened. I mean, it really, he, I come back. By I, I, the way, your wife was in our studio and saw an angel for the first time in her life. Behind you. Yeah. Behind you. Glory right, to God. Right here. But I want to tell you something. This is what the Lord told me. He said, just like Jesse preached that message on four crazy friends. He said, listen, if it hadn't have been for many people that have loved you and your church people and your friends and your family, but he said, I put four of y'all together <laughs> because y'all love people. Yes. And I put you together. And this is the reason I put you together is because tonight, just like those guys carried that guy that couldn't help himself, they, that when they couldn't get, he quit, couldn't get in, there was no way possible for them to get into Jesus. They just got up on the roof and tore it off. And what the Lord said to me, oh, I just feel like I need to preach Come here on. tonight. Glory to God. Come on, Keith. Hey. Go, go, go. Listen, listen, go. listen, listen to me. Listen to me tonight. I feel like tonight there's a, something you've been trying to get from Jesus that you hadn't been able to get, but I believe tonight is the night that you're going to get that breakthrough in your life. Stand up and praise Ooh, God. Glory. Praise him. Ooh, glory. There are people being healed right now in here. Pain is going away right now in here. I see it. Four crazy friends that believe Jesus can do anything. And those four men got up on that roof and they took out. You know that guy, he's getting, you know, he, they're carrying him up. He can't do nothing. But they're carrying him up on that. You know, um, Kevin wrote a book, uh, Days of Heaven on Earth. You know what? I, I want that anointing he's got, but I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to get the way he got it. <laughs> I want it, but I don't want to get that way. You know what? You hear what all Jesse went through to have yeah. that great anointing? I mean, he was in all this stuff when he was young, and then God radically turned his life around. I mean, he's on fire for God. Hallelujah, Lord. He said to me on the phone. The first one of the first things you ever said to me on the phone was, "You said, you know what? The devil lost a good one when he lost me." <laughs> yeah. He got me to laugh at. The first time. And then you got Sid Roth here that is winning thousands of Jews. Come on, Jesus. Not, never happened since the day of Pentecost. Amen. Where are we at on that timetable with God? These are generals right here tonight. Praise the Lord. God has brought them here for such a time as this, but he's brought you here for such a time as this. Yes, Lord. And those guys tore the roof up. They didn't care what anybody else said, nor what anybody thought. And these men don't care what anybody thinks tonight except what Jesus thinks. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. And they let that man down right in the presence of all those people. And it got Jesus' attention. And that man, listen, here's what the Lord told me to tell you. You that have been let down are about to be lifted up. Come on. Take over. Take over. <laughs> and let me tell you something. On those four crazy friends, those guys decided to pay for that roof. They couldn't get to Jesus. They said, we're going to tear that roof up. Do you have a friend like that? The Bible said two of us agree. Well, my God, you got four of us. <laughs> what are you believing for? What do you want? Stand to your feet. Come on. Lift oh, your hands up oh. and tell God what you want right now. Come on. Come on. Just tell him. Just say it out loud. Just say what you want. Woo. Not at what home. you need, what at, you want. At home. At home, too. Uh, and people yeah. that are watching by television, whatever. Faith destroys all distance between God and man. Father, you're hearing these prayers today. Satan, I get yes. great pleasure in telling you, yeah. get under these people's feet that what we bind on earth is bound in heaven, and we bind you in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, let spiritual physical and financial things begin to take place at people's homes as well as in this studio. Lord, we decree and declare it today that people that are sick are being healed. Lord, that people that are depressed will have the joy of the Lord. I thank you for it. Lord, thank you that you're going to get those two men out of prison. They yeah. said they'll be there for life. No, they won't. You're going to change <laughs> yes. the records. You're going to get them people and they're going to come home to these people. Lord, we decree and declare it today in Jesus' name. Somebody shout somebody. Yeah. You can sit down right now, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yeah, you've been you've been to heaven, Kevin. Uh, what and you 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 feel you see what's going on in this studio? What what do you sense? What do you see? Well, I was I was actually surprised. I have the best word I've ever had 
in my life right now for you all. The Lord said, you've been asking to hear my voice. He said, but I'm just as loud as I was when I was on that mountain in Sinai. He said, the problem is you need to dial every other voice out. Wow. You're listening to the wrong yeah. things. The Lord says, I'm broadcasting full power, full voice right now. He said, you need to start dialing out the world. Those people that are talking to you, you need to stop answering your phone. You need to stop watching the stuff you're watching, and you start to look and seek God out. Because I'm telling you what, the Lord just told me. He said, this is the best word you're ever going to give. He said, everybody wants to hear my voice. How many want to hear God's voice, right? Yeah. He said, I'm going to tell you how to do it. He said, I've been speaking loud for, for a long time. Because when I spoke, I, I could whisper, and the, and the worlds were created. So it's not the loudness of my voice. It's, a, it's a other voices you're listening to. It's time to seek God. It's time to dial out the world. Because God's trying to talk to you right now. There's some of you going to have to give up your friends that you have, and God's going to give you four crazy friends. Amen. That's the word. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that good? <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me just say this. People, are not, they're not going to understand you because the natural man receive it, not the things of God. Because they're foolishness unto them. That's why God gave me crazy friends. People say, oh, that's all crazy stuff. No, it's, it's actually more reality than what they think it is. You are spirit housed in a soul and clothed in a body. And I sense this so strong in my spirit. I understand what he's talking about in heaven because I've been there myself. I know what Jesus looks like. He talked to me. I seen he's between 5'11 and 6'1. He's got light brown hair. I know it. Now, you can believe it or not believe yeah. it, but that's a fact. I've been there five hours and 15 minutes. Wow. Now, I don't talk much about it. Why? Because it's too holy for me. Mm -hmm. It's so holy, it just touches me. And, I, I, and why me? Who knows? <laughs> he told me, I said, well, he said, go tell my people I'm coming. Yeah. I said, wow. you know what I said? Wow. I, I mean, I, I I said, Lord, they know you're coming. He got stern with me. He said, no, they don't. How many people right now are not even thinking about yeah. Jesus is coming? Yeah. But let me tell you something. I was praying that yesterday, and I told the Lord, that, Jesus, come here. Come here. I said, Jesus, if you don't come in my lifetime, you're going to miss a great opportunity here. <laughs> now, that may sound nuts to you. How many of y'all want Jesus to come? Yeah. Well, ask him to come. Put that pressure on him. Put that pressure on the covenant. Ask him to come constantly every day. He loves us. You know why he, he doesn't know when he's coming? Only the Father why? knows. Yeah. Why? Because if he told Jesus, he'd tell us. <laughs> <laughs> he would tell us. He'd say, he'd say Thursday, 2 o'clock. Get ready. Be ready. <laughs> be, ready. You see, be ready. I'm telling you. And I really believe, and I mean this, and I'll say it worldwide. I, I can't, it, I'd be surprised if he didn't come in my lifetime. I honestly believe that. And I know b biblical prophecy. I know all that stuff because I am a, a learned man. I don't mean it privately. I mean, I've studied it. But when I come to God, he, I can hear that horse. <laughs> he want to get on that horse. That horse is ready to come down here. Yeah, yeah, you see? Amen. And I really believe I wouldn't mind it coming. I wouldn't have to fly back to New Orleans if he came now. <laughs> now, you lifted your hands up to God a while ago. Never put your hand on that thing you, you turn loose. Let God bring it to you. In every which way, shape, or form. Don't let nobody talk you out of this. Never, because they'll try, because they're going to do it intellectually. It's not a feeling. It's faith. And when you understand that, oh, God, that's what happened here. And I, I told him, and I felt led the Lord to tell you, I, told, I said, Keith, watch yourself. He said, what? I told him this a while ago. He said, I never heard it before. I said, God told me, Jesse, in my study, Jesse, I'm God. I got the power to take your life. I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> he said, but I don't have the authority. When I told it to Sid, Sid went, he said, Jesse, death and life's in the power of your tongue, not mine. Wow. Think about that. He said, now, how long you want to live? And I told Keith, because I know he, he loves his wife, don't misunderstand, but you can release your spirit. You want me to prove it to you? Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Wow. He released his spirit. The Bible said, be you therefore imitators of God as dear children. Do you understand? You don't realize the power you have. Yeah. Wow. But see, but you have to complete your destiny, Keith, and That's your right. destination. You have to finish this thing. Yeah. And you know why? Because if you left, it would be a great hurt in the body of Christ because you got so much to deliver for, to people. Yeah. You understand? And I'm pretty sure your wife would be a little angry that you didn't finish. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're going to see her. And I'm going to get to see my mama when I get to heaven yeah. like my daddy saw her at 15 years old. I just remember the gray hair. But daddy saw her at 15. And I'm going to get to see her young again. Amen. How many of you have people in heaven? Listen. Oh, be sure. The Bible says so great a cloud of witnesses. You can't be a witness unless you witness something. You know what the Lord told me? He allows them sometimes to look down on you. 
He want, they want to know something. I know my mom is saying, what is that boy doing? <laughs> what is that? I'm telling you. No, he, he doesn't allow sorrow, but he allows it sometimes. Have you ever been in your house somewhere? Maybe someone has went to heaven. All of a sudden, you sense their presence. Hold your hand up. Yeah. You know why? They were there. Just that little bit. Pull back that curtain. Your wife, they were there. You see what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, listen to me. <laughs> heaven is not that far away. Especially in the spirit of God. Amen. Jesus is coming. I'm telling you. He is coming. That was the message. And I thought, well, why would do all that? Just tell me he was coming. Because that is the biggest event that will ever happen. And all these people that don't believe this, they're going to wish to God they had. Yeah. I'm telling you. Jesus is coming. And if you'll pray, let's put the pressure on it. I'll put the pressure on it. I said, you didn't come last night. <laughs> now, I know that sounds nuts. Sid, I, 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 I said, Jesus. Jesus. And he said, you really want me to come? Yes! Why? I want to start my work in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. We ain't going to be laying on the ground and angels dropping grapes in our mouth. <laughs> there's, the universe, there's, there, there's so much to do. And we're going back to Genesis 1. Mm -hmm. Be fruitful, always produce, multiply, always increasing, replenish, use it and reuse it. And then he said, subdue. If anything gets out of line, put it down. Yeah. I pray that every day. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on. And if the body of Christ does that, and you get on enough television stations and networks, the Bible said when the gospel is preached to the world, <laughs> the end shall come. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. This program right now is hurrying Jesus up to come because wow. the gospel is being preached. Thank you, Lord. Kevin, you, you told me that you really didn't want to come back to earth. Why? When you were in heaven. Why? Well, I, I, I argued with him because I didn't want to come back because of all the, the uh, I saw how slow it was down here. I saw how um, if you don't stay in your game, stay on your game and stay focused, you can get off really easily. And I saw that from the other side. And so he said, he said, when he come back, would you, um, would you tell people the real truth about me and tell them that there's nothing impossible if they'll just go ahead and, and yield to the spirit of God. He said, I'll take them places that they haven't even thought of yet. It, their destination will be even further. And he, this is what he said. He said, he said, I need history makers. I need, I need people to change people's destinies, change where they're going to end up. You can do that by speaking the word of life. Amen. Amen. Wow. You know, prophecy is history wrote in advance. So prophesy today. Amen. Speak it Think up. about that. Kate, prophesy right now. Okay, I'll, I will. You know, in, <laughs> be glad to. Those that have been let down are about to be lifted up. Amen. <laughs> by four crazy friends. Because we're not afraid to tear the roof off tonight. No. But let me say this. I, I was praying the other night, and I, I, began to, I, I began to look through some things Cheryl had left. And there was a diary there. And it, it, was, it was dated and everything. And I, I, I opened the diary. And Cheryl said, I had a dream last night. She's just writing to herself. I had a dream last night. I was in heaven. And you know what? I was as busy in heaven. In fact, I was more busy in heaven than I was on earth. Right. So I asked the Lord, Lord, why am I so busy? He said, because you finished your destiny. You're here. You're doing your work now. And then you know what you told me on the phone? He said, I said, I, had a, I heard Cheryl's voice audibly. It woke me up. And Jesse said, you're going to hear it again. You, you may even have a dream. You may see her. You may have a visitation. A few weeks later, I had a dream. Cheryl wasn't sick anymore. She came to me in a dream. She said, look at me. She looked like she did when she was, she was 64 years old. I was 62. She looked like she was 30 years old. She said, look at me, Keith. I'm not sick. I'm having a wonderful time. Now go finish your destiny and get on over here, and we'll be together forever. Oh, glory to God. That's what you told me was going to happen. Uh, is there something that either of you wanted to share but haven't shared yet? I just, I just feel like um, the last thing that Jesus told me before I came back was he said, tell people that the time is short. He said, tell people that I don't have the time to prepare them like I did with Moses all those years. He said, Tell them there's an acceleration happening and that you can't submit enough. You cannot be humble enough. You cannot pray enough. But there's a, this is what he said. He said, you cannot yield enough. He said, if people would just set their sails and let me blow through them, he said, I, they, they'll be history makers. Do you want to be a history maker? You can change the way things are going right now. You can change that if you just yield to God. You can change the history of this world. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I say 
a lot of people don't seem to understand this. Faith does not stack up. Mm. I wish it did. Just because you say 40 years don't mean you have 40 years of faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. Don't come by hearing. It comes by hearing and hearing. See, you know why sometimes you get healed, sometimes you don't? You ever wonder why? Why would God hear you this and he wouldn't hear you this? Because you used all your faith you had for the last sickness and you didn't replenish yourself. Wow. See, faith come by hearing. It cometh. It don't stack up. It cometh. It cometh. People, my, my daughter said, Dad, you, you even go to church on vacation. Most preachers say, man, Jesse, you need to rest your mind. I ain't cutting God out of my life just because I have a day off. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm going to church. So I, I want to, because you may have to pull this faith that's out of me. I have to be instant in season and out of season because we're ministers of the gospel key. She said, so are you. And you're, see, and somebody like just come, and you too, come, and they'll pull the faith that's on you because they want to hear something, not heard something. And when you understand that, you have to be constantly giving out, but you have to constantly replenish yourself. Mm -hmm. See, and I do that every day. Before I go to bed, I said, okay, Jesus, time to fill up. <laughs> Boy, and I put that scripture in my mind, Lord God, I'm, and it just, and I Wait, Lord, it. Tell me, tell me exactly what you do. Uh, in your prayer time before you go to bed. I want okay. to hear this. When I go to bed, when I, when I go to bed, I said, Lord, I'm going to put this prayer in the bank for tomorrow. Sound nuts? <laughs> I'm putting it in the bank. And I pray something for tomorrow. When I finish praying, whatever I'm believing for, I said, now, Lord, I'm going to preach myself a sermon. Jesse, this is what the Lord said about you. Greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. If God be for you, who could be against you? No weapon formed against you is going to prosper. And I start shouting to myself. I mean, I have stood in hotels by myself in front of a mirror, preached a revival, and gave an invitation and answered it. <laughs> I am not lying. I have done it. I have, why? I need to hear, not just heard. Yeah, I need to yeah, hear and hear and so. hear. Because you see, y'all needed us today. Not that we anything special, but we willing vessels, willing vessels. You needed us today. You see, you needed something we would say. You needed something, and God sent us in. I love, I appreciate you talking about my four crazy friends because see, you need people to get beyond the rim of the natural yeah, and right. start walking in the spirit. That's right. And I'm telling, you, I do this. In fact, when even when I do business, you know what the Lord tells me: use spiritual concepts. Now, you know, I said, Lord, no, Lord, I'm doing business. I'm going to put my blue pinstripe suit on, you know, and I'm going to do business here, you know. And I know how to do business. I've, I know how to mix the business with the anointing. But then I'll begin to use what I call spiritual concept, which blows the devil's mind off. And they don't know how to handle that. They go, what did you say? Did God said? Yeah. This is what the Lord said. And I, and I told one man one time, I said, this is what the Lord said. Now, are you going to miss God and go to hell over this? Or are you going to do what God said? He goes, uh, uh, I guess I'm going to do what God said. Now, that sounds crazy, but it, it does to the natural. So I fill myself up with the word of God before I go to bed, and I fill my mind up so I don't have crazy dreams. Yeah. I'm not going to allow the devil <laughs> to get into my mind when I'm sleeping. Amen. So I fill my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotion, mm -hmm. see, with the word of God. And I have some of the greatest things. <laughs> oh, Kathy asked me one time, she said, did the Lord come see you last night? I woke up the other night, and the Lord was standing about for me, I guess, to that crowd back there. And he went, <laughs> just like that. Now, you don't have to believe it. I, you didn't need to. I saw it. I went, hey. And he just smiled. And he woke me. I said, what are you doing? He said, I was watching you sleep. I said, you're watching me sleep. He said, you know where I learned it from? I said, no. Where you learn? He said, you. Remember when Jody was little? You'd go by her bed and listen to her sleep and listen to her breathe. Yeah. How many of you did that to your children? Yeah. How many of you, I, I, I was listening to Kathy breathe the other day. She's sleeping. <laughs> She's just kind of sleeping. And it's, it's so wonderful. It's, and the Lord, that's how sensitive he is. Even when you don't ask him to come, he's going to show up that's right. to make sure you're okay. Yeah. That's for someone in here. Yeah. You've been struggling to push through this thing. You don't have to, hey, Lord, show my lead. Yeah, okay, you want a visitation, it's going to come. Don't do what I did. Don't say, oh, no, Jesus. Receive that. Wow. Let me tell you what's going to happen. Your body's going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> body can't handle anything spiritual, whether it's a devil or, or, or an angel does this, because that's a natural thing. But it'll calm itself down. And then you just listen to what God has to say to you. And you're going to be surprised. And he's going to take away that incident that happened in that pickup truck yeah. when you had that red blouse on. Wow. He's coming to take that personally away from you. And that's all we're allowed to say about that. 
but you've got a visitation coming. Get ready. I, I just asked the Lord. You might have heard me did it. I said, when are you going to do it? He, he just told me, that ain't none of your business. <laughs> I want to know myself. I don't know about you. But it's soon. And that thing that happened will be washed away. You will never remember it anymore. Thank you, Lord. And the only one that can do that, he has to do it personally because you won't believe it unless he does it. So he's granted you a visitation. Let, let me pray a prayer over you, closing prayer from the Bible. It's a Jewish prayer. I'm going to pray it, though, from this side of the Messiah, although it was written before the Messiah came. And, you know, some of you have never been blessed by your father. Yeah. I want to bless you right now. The Lord has already blessed you. Yes, the Lord has already smiled upon you. The Lord has already surrounded you with his favor. The Lord has already given you all of his good promises. The Lord has already accepted you. The Lord has already filled you with his spirit. The Lord has already given you everything you need. The Lord has already given you his shalom, his peace in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. In the name that is above every name, every problem, every hurt, every worry, go in Jesus' name. Yeshua HaMashiach Tzikenu, Jesus the Messiah, our righteousness. And all God's people got a little Meshuga and stood up and said, Amen. Amen. God has given everybody in this world life for a purpose. Did you realize that you were born to bring something special into this world that nobody but you can bring? Do you understand you were created to shine a light that has never shone before? God has revealed powerful keys to Jesse that he wants to share with you so you can access all the promises and blessings of God like never before. Call now to get Jesse Duplantis' two-book package, The Big 12, Jesse's personal confidence-building principles for achieving total success and wanting a God you can talk to. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9523. Through Jesse's book, The Big 12, you will begin to determine what you truly want. Establish a goal to fulfill your heart's desire. Understand how God will give you strategies in the midst of wilderness times that will bring victory and success in achieving His plan for your life. Learn to avoid seeking the approval of others and instead to begin to hear the still small voice of God. Understand the importance of establishing a goal and allow God to give you a passion to fulfill it. Find out the importance of dwelling in the land of the best. Understand how judging others opens you up to distraction, oppression, and stalls your ability to walk in victory. Learn the power of taking others along with you as you walk in success and so much more. When Jesse Duplantis was a little boy in church, all he ever wanted was a God he could talk to. Now through his book, Wanting a God you can talk to. You will understand the many different ways God speaks to us. Find out how God speaks through the Bible, visions, dreams, and the inner witness, and how to make this a daily part of your everyday life. Begin to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, allowing God to communicate His voice through you. Understand the wisdom Jesse will impart to you on how to draw closer to God than you've ever been before. Find out how you can spend every day talking to God and hearing His voice and direction. Get to know God is a real friend and is your heavenly father. As you read Jesse's books, you will receive an impartation of boldness and confidence to step into your God-given destiny and purpose. Don't miss out on getting Jesse Duplantis' two-book package, The Big 12, Jesse's personal confidence-building principles for achieving total success and wanting a God you can talk to. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9523. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9523 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.
You are watching ISN, the It's Supernatural Network.